Thank you for joining. In the previous lessons we implemented all CRUD action methods such as GET, POST, PUT and DELETE. Since we were using explicit model binding in our project, in this and next lesson I will explain this topic in detail. This is the diagram from the previous lesson that shows the order of implicit model binding. It's called implicit because it happens automatically and is arranged by the framework based on certain conventions. The order itself is on your screen. The framework checks each source of data in the order until it finds an appropriate parameter to bind. It follows a systematic sequence of checks for form fields, request body, and so on. Once the framework finds a parameter that matches the available data, it stops searching and performs the binding. If there is no matching data in any of the sources, it may result in a model binding error, or the parameter might be given a default value if one is specified in the action method. In essence, it checks each source one by one, and the first one that matches gets bound to the corresponding parameter. This principle is known as the first match wins rule in implicit model binding. Now let's see how to perform explicit binding. We can use the controller class from our previous lesson. For the purpose of this lesson, I will temporarily comment out the existing code. We will create a new endpoint, and to practice explicit binding we can duplicate any method. It will be a get type method, responding to the address API Solar Systems explicit with two dynamic parameters. Let's rename the method to explicit. I will add a couple of if statements that will be triggered based on the specific conditions for the parameters, either versus or auth, and the method's return statement. This is a straightforward method designed for practice. As you may recall from previous lessons, we have tested code similar to this one, confirming that implicit binding works perfectly. To implement explicit binding and override the framework's default settings, we need attributes. If we scroll down to the methods we implemented earlier, we can see that we have previously implemented such attributes in our code. For this lesson, I will include two from query attributes, one for each parameter. Now this record overrides any default framework rules, indicating that we no longer use any parameters except the ones from the query string. Let's open Postman. I will enter all the required parameters, including route data and query string parameters. As you may recall from the diagram, this section of the URL which contains query string parameters comes after the route data in the implicit model binding. So this part of the URL path would be triggered first if we remove both attributes. However, since we bound the model using attributes from the query, 999 and no data should be skipped. Let's test it. And indeed, we received the reply with the values from the query string parameters. And the raw data is ignored. So explicit model binding for this part works perfectly. Now let's test another condition. I will change both attributes to from route and mark both parameters as nullable, with no other changes to the code. In Postman I will send a request, and sure enough we will receive a correct reply. To confirm that the model is bound explicitly, considering that from route data takes precedence before query string parameters, we need to verify that the route data is indeed triggered. To test this, Let's remove both route data parameters. Please note that both parameters we just removed from the URL are explicitly model bound within our code using from route attributes. In Visual Studio, let's place a breakpoint to verify the received value. If we send a request from Postman and observe both values in Visual Studio, we will see that both values are null. This means that even with no parameters, the model is explicitly bound, and the framework did not pick up values from the query parameters. This provides us with one more confirmation that it was bound correctly. Let's move forward and revert both parameters to from query. In Postman, we will need both parameters back for the route data, but I will remove the URL segment with the query string. Let's send the request. In Visual Studio, we once again receive null values. This means that any attribute options we have implemented so far work perfectly in NetCore. Now it's time to combine these two attributes and test them together. I will change the second parameter to from route, while the first parameter from query will remain in place. 
To test this, we will need the entire string with the necessary URL segments and raw data. Let's proceed and send request. As a result, both values we received contain the required values in accordance with the explicit binding. In this case, the default order is ignored, as you can see, because the vs value is coming from query attribute and the auth parameter provides the value from the URL segments. Since in the previous lessons we completed the model and DTO parts of the Planets project with Entity Framework, where we implemented DTOs, in the next lesson we will discuss fundamental aspects like POCO or POCO, which remains a simple and lightweight way to model data cleanly without adding complex behaviors. We implemented models in our project using this exact POCO solution. Additionally, I will explain the order of model binding in case we omit some parameters. The subject of model binding will be further developed and combined with POCO. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or need further assistance, feel free to comment below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel for more great coding content. Stay updated with the latest videos by ringing the notification bell. Happy coding!